Hi there, and welcome to this video on differentiation. Now, with a topic like this, it's um, really important to warm up our brains and get ready for the lesson ahead. So we're going to do a quick warm-up exercise. Uh, really simple, the rules. And you just have to times every term by the power and then reduce the power by 1. So, for example, can we see here? 5m cubed times by the power, so 5 times 3, well that's 15, and reduce the power by 1, 3 becomes 2. Times by the power, so 4 times 4 is 16, reduce the power by 1, 4 becomes 3. Easy peasy, right? Let's have a go. So, see if you can go along with me, pause the video at any point if you need to. I'm sure you're already shouting at the screen or just thinking in your head, this must be 10a to the 4, and that'd be right. 5 times 2 is 10 and reduce the 5 down by 1. Yeah. Obviously I'm going to make it a bit harder as it goes. We've got to warm up. So what's this one going to be? 7 times 3, 21. A is our base value and we have a 6. So it's basically indices that we're doing now. Ooh, negatives. Be careful. 2 times negative 3, minus 6. What's going to come as the power? We have to take away 1. Who went for minus 2? I'm sure some of you did. But that is minus 4. Okay, fractions. Times the tops, times the bottoms. So we have 1 sixth. 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 3 is a sixth. Uh, sorry, a sixth. A is our base. So we have a coefficient. We have our base. And we have our index value. So what is 1 third take away 1? If you think about 1 as being 3 thirds, you're going to get to minus 2 thirds. Okay, it's a bit trickier, wasn't it? Oh, looks easy, but it's hard. Have a think. Now, the answer is just 2 for this one because there's a 1 there. Even if you don't write it, you should know there's a 1. So 1 times 2 is 2. But then what, what we end up with is a to the power of 0. So that means 2 times a to the power of 0, and anything to the power of 0 is 1. So we can cancel it out, because 2 times 1 is just 2. I should put 1 there, really. So 2 times 1 is 2. What about this one? So there isn't any power value here. It's, it's, not, it's not that. Well, th that is true. That is 6. But what I want you to realize is, I could put an a, but let's just put an x. That's true, isn't it? x to the power of 0 is 1, and so 6 times 1 is still 6. There is a power value there on any base I want to, but it would be a 0. And if we times by if we times by 0, well, if we times anything by 0, you just get 0 out. So for this exercise, there isn't an answer. It just all disappears because we times them by 0. A lot of people think, well, surely it's that. Well, that is true, but there's zero of them, so a zero. Oh, a bit trickier. Now we have two terms, so have a think about this one. And hopefully, you just thought, well, I'll just do them separately. So we've got 10a to the power of 4, and then plus 5 times 3 is 15. Base value is a. Drop the power down to a 2. That's it. So just because there's more than one term doesn't mean it's more difficult. That's exactly the same, so I didn't change that, it's a bit lazy of me. So that's 10a to the power of 4, and okay, this is, remember this is a 1. 1 times 4 is 4, and we're going to drop that down to a power of 0. Anything to the power of 0 is 1, so we're just not going to write it. That's it done. Let's have a look at this one. So 2 times 3 is 6, m Drop the tower power down by 1. I'm not going to write the 1. It's bad maths. Okay, 7. If you think about it as this, uh, when we times by 0, it's nothing to write. It's gone. It's just 0. Don't ever write 6m plus 0. That's really naff. Just 6m. Okay, so we've got three terms. So 10m to the 4. Now be careful here. You can look at this as a minus 3, but I would just, you know, that's just telling us what to do with this term as well. So 3 times 2 is 6, 
So I'm taking away six lots of m. I'm not going to put the one. Or you could look at that as minus three times two is minus six. It doesn't really matter. Um, always put a one there for these. Just it makes it easier with the differentiation. So one times seven is seven. M to the zero. Oh, that's just one. So I'm not going to write it. It's getting a little bit harder. Oh, again, I, I should be changing this one. I haven't. So that's just 10a to the power of 4. I really apologise about that. But what is 4 times a half? Well, half of 4 is 2. Drop the power down. Nice and simple. Okay, so interesting points to notice. It's, it's really easy, but we do kind of get stuck when it's like this. So if you look at these three here, so 2m, that just differentiates to 2. And I just dropped a word in there that I wasn't meant to because it's a warm-up game, but you've actually been differentiating this whole time. Um, 3R, when we play our little warm-up game, it's just a 3 and P. Well, that was a 1 because there's a 1 there. So if there wasn't any power apart from a 1, the, the, uh, the variable, the base value basically, just disappeared. And if you look at this one here, the 6, if it was just a constant term on its own, there was just nothing to write. So here we've got two terms. So we've got one like above, so 2m would just become a 2. And that part here, this constant term, it just goes to 0. So that, the answer would just be 2. That's the only time it gets tricky, really, is when there isn't a power to use. But if it's just power to the 1, you lose it. Just write the constant values. If it's a constant value on its own, you just don't write anything. So let's go back to graphs because you have just been differentiating. And why is that important? So if we look at graphs, we've got y equals 3x plus 4 and y equals 9 minus 2x. You should be able to tell me at this point that this is a positive gradient and it goes in that direction. This telling me it's a negative direction negative gradient, so it's going down in this. Gradient of 3, the most simple way of drawing it, be a long 1 and 3 up. And a negative 2 gradient be a long 1 and 2. Just make sure we're going in the other direction. And you should be able to tell me that these are y-intercepts. So if I was to draw it, it would look something like this. But what actually happens when we do our warm-up exercise on these functions? So if we did our warm-up exercise on 3x plus 4, what do we get? 3. If we did our warm-up exercise on 9 minus 2x, what do we get? Well, the 9, that just goes to a 0, and we end up with minus 2. So when we actually do that warm-up game, it actually tells us the gradient of a straight-line graph. You might be thinking, hang on, why? What is the point? y equals mx plus c. I just look at the m. I know the gradient. So why bother with it? Well, easy really. What's the gradient of that curve? Now, here we have a slight problem because you've never been asked to find gradients of curves before, but it's really useful. And in science, you do it a lot. You call it rate of change. You've done an experiment. You need to work out the rate of change at different points. And that's the gradient. So here we go. Let's have a, hopefully this is going to work, fingers crossed. Here we go. Oh yeah. Ah, oh. One thing I didn't think about was the, the region which I'm filming in, which is probably going to... Oh no, I can, I can save it, it's fine. You just can't see really what's on the left here. So I'm just going to get rid of a few things here. Right. So here's our, that line that you just saw before you. And I've just got a point here down at 1. Uh, I can actually move that point, he says. Oh, it doesn't seem like I can move that point. Great, I've put a fixed point in. Fantastic. Now, if we wanted to find the gradient at any point, what we would do is we would draw a tangent. Now, this can be super inaccurate. I'm using a computer, so it's perfect. And we can find the gradient of that tangent. So just by changing y over changing x. And like I said earlier, the simplest way of drawing any gradient is going along 1 and seeing how many need to go up. And in this case, it is 4. 
So we can do it, but if we wanted to find the gradient at 2, for example, right up here, we'd have to draw a new tangent. If we wanted to find the gradient at 0, we'd have to draw a new tangent and keep drawing loads and loads of tangents. So we found better methods of doing it, which is called differentiation. Now I'm trying to find, there it is, okay. So, and hopefully what you'll appreciate, if we drew a tangent on this side, it would be a positive. If we drew a tangent on this side, the gradient actually be negative, and the gradients of the tangents would be a lot less steep nearer the vertex. And on the vertex, you may even be able to see that it would be perfectly horizontal along here. So it's always changing, not like a straight line. So when we differentiate, this you might want to write this down, so pause it at the end, but listen for now. When we differentiate, we actually find something called the gradient function, and you're going to hear me talking about that a lot. Now, we had to come up with a name, and if we think about graphs, we've always got y is the like original function, and we're always telling you what the y is with respect to x's. So we call this d for differentiate, and we differentiate y with respect to x, but we actually say that as dy by dx. Don't say dy over dx, it's wrong. So it's dy by dx. Now, you won't see this very often at GCSE, but if, you know, this is when it was y equals. If they didn't tell us that, it just said the function. Well, what we do then, we just introduce this little dash. And so the gradient function could be called f dash x. Okay, but most of the time, you're going to see this one at GCSE. Um, and it's really important because it allows us to find the gradients of curved lines. Okay. We don't need it for straight lines because the gradient is constant. It's the m in mx plus c. And to differentiate, you've already been doing it. It's that simple. You just multiply each term by the power and then reduce the power by 1. So pause the video, write that down, and hit play when you're ready. So let's have a look. Find the gradient when x is equal to 1. So to do that, we find the gradient function. So dy by dx is equal to, right, so each term times by the power, so 2 times 3 is 6, reduce the power by 1, I now have an x. Second term, there's a 1 there, so I'm just going to put the 1, 1 times 2 is 2, it's a takeaway, so I just put the takeaway, um, and we drop that power down, so it's just going to stay there, and if you remember, the important things to notice, if it's just an x term, or an a term, or an m term, whatever it is, just lose it. Just keep it constant. And a constant on its own, we're not even going to write it. It's just going to go to zero. And so this is the gradient function. It allows us to find the gradient whenever we want to. So we're going to find it when x is 1. You just put a 1 in here. So it would be 6 lots of 1 minus 2, which is, of course, 4. And you saw that in the GeoGebra file that I showed you. Now, I was hoping that I could move that point around. <laughs> But when x is minus 1, we're up here. So if we were to imagine a tangent, we'd expect, that's obviously not a tangent, we'd expect it to be negative. So I'm just going to write the gradient function again. Oh, a bit of a voice break there. I'm sure you enjoyed that. So here's our gradient function. Oh, but we want to use our function now, our you know, function machine. Remember when you were little, it's just what you put in. Like you follow the little lines across and the boxes and the arrows. Great fun. And this is what we mean by function, it's just a set of instructions. So pop minus 1 into here, so we've got 6 lots of minus 1, take away 2, minus 6, take away 2, minus 8. And you can see it would be a lot steeper there than it would be here. So that's why the 8 is a higher number than the 4, for example. Find the gradient when x is 0. Well, when x is 0, we're there, so we're expecting a negative, but a smaller gradient than when it was at minus 1, because the angle is less steep. So dy by dx, I'm, I'm a bit pushed for space here, so I'm just going to skip the function itself. So I've got 6 lots of 0, take away 2. Obviously, that's 0, take away 2. That is a minus 2. And that's it. And that is how you find gradients of the curves. You use the simple warm-up game. 
that's differentiating and you just plug in a value obviously it gets way more complicated but for now that's all you need to know but last thing to take away every single term before you can differentiate must be in this form so for example if you had this you can't differentiate this until you expand it so that would still be y and then you could differentiate times by the power reduce the power by 1 times by the power reduce the power by 1 here you should be able to spot this as an indice problem so y is actually the same as x to the power of 5 because I, I'm timesing indices with the same base value I can add the powers so in here dy by dx is 5x to the 4 this is in the form ax to the n this is in the form ax to the n just multiple terms of it okay that's it guys best of luck